Hey folks, welcome to this new video. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about this new machine that I made here. Um, so what is machine? It is an inverted pendulum balancing robot. So let's talk a little bit about how it works, do a little demo. Um, so firstly, there's a little pendulum here, which you can see is free spinning on a shaft in the middle and Machine's turned off right now, so it's just a regular old spinning pendulum. I can turn it up, let it go, and it just swings and will eventually settle back down to its uh, steady state at the bottom. So if I turn it on, it gets a bit more interesting. Now if I turn the power on, one moment. Okay, so. Bring it up to the very top. And there we go. Oh, that's out of frame. Let me move you up. Ooh. Oh, that's an interesting angle. Look at that. That's a bit better. So, as you can see, and the incredibly annoying noise. When it's turned on, you move it up to the top, it's able to balance a pendulum right at the very top. And if I turn it off while it's trying to do its bouncy thing, down it goes. So, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll probably know that uh, I have something of a thing with making bouncing robots. So, to the link in the description, you can see where I've made a ball and beam bouncing machine before and uh, you also see I've made a two-wheel balancing robot, which in actual fact works on more or less the same principles as this. It's The two-wheel balancing robot is effectively an inverted pendulum as well. Um, so yeah, I have sort of a thing with these machines. I really enjoy making them. I really enjoy the, the maths behind how they work and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the construction of this machine. Not not in huge detail, but you know, I can show it off a bit. Um, then I'm also going to talk about the software, that kind of stuff, and I'll use this as an example to talk a little bit about a topic called control theory, um, which I'll do a little bit of detail on, just kind of, you know, system level thinking and how these sort of things work and generally what the concepts are. I'll talk a little bit about PID controllers, um, which is what's coded on the microcontroller that um, is able to control the whole thing. Yeah, so let's jump in. The design of this machine is pretty straightforward. Um, basically, it's a free swinging pendulum uh, mounted on a set of bearings through a carriage that runs along a piece of V slot aluminium. So, if you're familiar with uh, 3D printing, this will be pretty familiar design to you. And of course, similar to most 3D printers, it's driven by a 200 step NEMA 17 stepper motor. On the back of the shaft that the pendulum spins on, there's also a um, HEDS 9000 optical uh, rotary encoder. Then for the rest of the electronics, it's just an Arduino Mega microcontroller with a custom um, shield popped on top that pretty much just houses a DRV 8825 stepper motor driver. And as far as the machine, how the machine actually works, um, it's pretty simple. Um, the pendulum, as the pendulum swings, the uh, optical encoder is able to determine the angle of it with a pretty good degree of accuracy. So that gets fed into the microcontroller. The microcontroller then uses the PID controller that's coded on it to figure out exactly what speed, either to the left or right, it needs to drive the carriage. Um, in order to stabilize the pendulum. So it works in one of two ways. Either it'll try and just dampen the pendulum to get it to settle to its normal steady state at the bottom faster than it would normally, or it's trying to hold the pendulum upside down, um, which is a unstable position for it to be in naturally. It was a fairly long road getting to, <laughs> to where it is now so it can balance upside down. Um, I made a good few mistakes along the way and a lot of absolutely terrible, terrible noises, which I'll try throughout this video to subject you to as little amount as possible. Um, 
But yeah, one of the bigger mistakes I made was uh, assuming that the problem was a position problem, which is why I kind of had the stepper motor in the first place for accurate positioning. Um, but in actual fact, the, the stabilization is more of a speed problem in terms of setting the speed towards the left and right that you want the carriage to move at, rather than setting um, the absolute position of it. Just a quick note on this next part, folks. Um, when I was recording it, I did a lot of rambling and a lot of uh, really detailed discussions, which uh, went on for quite a long time. So for this video, I decided to skip past a bunch of bits and just kind of have a more distilled version of it. If you want to see the full version of that, um, there's a link in the description to where I've uploaded just that segment of the video. It's about 18 minutes long. You can have a look at that if you're interested. Okay, we are going to start talking a little bit about control theory. So this is going to get a little bit abstract, but um, we're not going to do any maths or anything like that. We're just going to talk through some concepts, going to draw some pictures just to aid talking about the, the theory behind this stuff and um, hopefully give you guys a little bit more of an understanding about it. If you if you don't want to know anything about this, feel free to skip on. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it as related as I can to the example that we're looking at. Hopefully I'm not gonna <laughs> bore everyone to death and maybe my guys might learn something out of it and you know find something useful in it. All right, so let's get started. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm going to draw a box. Okay. So this is a system. So a system is anything can be electrical, mechanical, whatever, has some input and will have some output. So for our pendulum machine, it's pretty simple. Uh, the output is swinging of the pendulum. And the input is the movement of the, the carriage along its rail. Is, so when I knock the pendulum, it'll start spinning. So in again, in engineering terms and system terms, we'd call that a disturbance. So we would say when I hit the pendulum and it starts swinging, that I've added a disturbance to the system and that's started it moving. So if we were to like, graph that, so we'll say we'll graph the output, the output is going to be say the, the position of the pendulum as it swings. It would probably look something a little bit like this. So if we say that's the zero position, I'll, it'll start at zero, I'll hit it, it'll rise up, so that's our disturbance, and then it'll start oscillating like this, which is, we all know what that looks like, that's the pendulum swinging, doing its pendulum thing, and then it'll da -da -da -da, all the way back down to zero again. And it'll just sit there, <laughs> and that's that's you know it doesn't doesn't do you know a huge amount on its own. Um, it just kind of it doesn't really matter how hard you hit it; it'll always just sort of settle back down to zero. You could have a system whereby when you put a disturbance into it, it just goes crazy and it won't settle down on its own. So you could have so that that might look something like this. So if you had you had our system like this, this is our zero point again. You'd put some disturbance into it, it'd start moving, and it'd start to go up, and then it'd come down, and then it'd go up, and it'd go, and, you know, crazy. <laughs> it'd go off to infinity, and this is where you've got, you know, some mechanical system is, you know, tearing itself to pieces, or an electrical system is, is burning out, and that kind of thing. So, a system like this, you know, it's very easy to think of the idea of, well, we're going to want to control this system. And that's a lot of what we want to try and do is we have systems that are naturally unstable. And we want to do something to this system to be able to make it stable so that we can, you know, tell it to do things and it'll just do the thing we want it to do. Now I'm going to add in the concept of feedback. So for feedback, we're going to take something from the output and we're going to push this all the way back here up to here and now I'm just gonna add in something here so this is just you know, some graphical notation this is called a summer a summation block or a summer and um, basically what it's going to be doing is taking the output putting it all the way back to the input to create a feedback loop every time we have a piece of feedback it's going to come in it's going to come around here and then we're going to subtract it from the input so then what comes into the input of the system is going to be some negative value based on what it was 
take this big feed this big positive value and take it away from that and now I'm telling the system okay no I don't want you to be at this big position I now want you to be at this very negative position the idea is that you want to counteract any big movement with an equally big movement in like the opposite direction sort of that's the idea anyway Let's talk a little bit about the idea of like compensation and controllers and things like that. We're going to talk about a PID controller. With a PID controller, you can now end up with, you can tune it so that say, before we had our system was very, you know, it was very much, you know, just a gentle dampening now we could have our system do something like this so that when I flick it it comes up then it might shoot down a little bit and then very quickly it will settle right down to its point you can see the pendulum doing is we flicked it it goes way off it realizes how far off it is and then it it's figuring out how it needs to compensate to basically slow the pendulum down as quickly as possible so for that then it knows how much it needs to shoot the carriage left or right to get the, the pendulum to settle down. So it's essentially trying to catch the pendulum's motion and compensate for it to sit, make it settle down quite quickly. This block, and I'll sort of zoom it in a little bit, it sort of has three parts to it. So it's got the P part or proportional part, it has the I part or integral part and it has the D part, or derivative part. The P part, the proportional term, is essentially a scaling factor, or like it's a, what we say, is a, a, a gain that's applied to the directly to what the output value was, and it sort of will help scale it in some way. We've got the integral term. So this term is a little bit more complicated, but basically, when we look at our input side here, our like plus and our minus, so remember we've got our set point and we've got some feedback value based on that set point. So the difference between these two, which is what we're calculating here, is sometimes called the error. So what the integral term tends to do is basically it performs sort of an integral operation and it figures out what is the cumulative error as we've been going on. Now, the derivative term can be a little bit, it's a little bit strange. Basically, the derivative term, it's, all, all, it's very often not used because it can add a lot of complexity into systems. It can make them behave weird. But basically, the derivative term looks at, you know, a signal that's changing in value. And it's sort of is performing like a, um, a derivative operation on that signal, which will tell us at any one point what the rate of change of the signal is or whether it's increasing or decreasing what happens to happen is that as you do that if you have lots of high frequency oscillations in there so if your thing is changing positions really really rapidly the derivative terms will blow up in size and they can end up making the system wildly unstable so i think that probably covers most of what I wanted to talk about. This is very abstract. <laughs> I hope I did a good job explaining it. I hope it makes sense to people. Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to kind of try and distill this down a little bit and maybe make it a little bit clearer for people. Um, but yeah, if you have any comments, let me know. So this is now an example of just what we were talking about. We can see that with the machine turned off, we add a small disturbance to the pendulum and it just starts swinging, uh, oscillating about its set point, coming down to a nice stable position uh, on its own. Um, and you can also see it takes quite a bit of time for it to get there. Now we can see that when we turn the machine on and have the PID controller actively trying to dampen the system, we can see when we add our disturbance, it slows down way, way quicker. 
So that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it, um, regardless of whether you skipped past my haphazard explanation of control theory or not. Um, I've left some links in the description to some of my previous videos about balancing robots, that kind of thing. There's also the link to the video, the more detailed video about the description of control theory. Um, and I've left links for the CAD and the code as well, if you want to have a look at that and see uh, if you want to make something like this yourself. I'll leave you now with the uh, wonderful music of uh, the pendulum in its inverted mo mode doing its uh, balancing thing. Um, as always, thanks for watching, folks.